Today we're continuing on with our study of Daf Yomi. We are on Erevin Daf Hey Ben Amabet, last line. Chetzia Lubayi Temenuga, Bechetzi Chetzia Lisol Tagbia. So we mentioned the Mishnah about half of a amount of time you need to half of a loaf is the amount of time you need to, if you were in a house in Etzarat, that's how long it would be until you became Tame. And similar to half of that amount is the amount of time you would be, be with a Stores of um, an impure the amount of time that an impure that if you had eaten an impure food, then it would make you tummy. The Tano Fasicha Sial Tame Chimantofle. So Chimanta pay Gimel Banalif. So it was taught in the Tazapta that that one eighth of the loaf is the amount that can contract two uh two mouth for purposes of tuma ochle, meaning that food event to become tummy. So the minimum size of that is one eighth of a loaf. But time and done my time below tiny too much ochlin. So why did our brides uh, stop and not mention too much ochlin as well? So why did we do that? Because the measures aren't exactly the same, because it's not exactly a half. That's why I listed it separately. As it's taught in another bread. So how much is a half of a pras? So we talk about how big a pras was. How much is a half of a pras? So we said a pras is kima. It is two eggs worth minus a little bit. Right? Rabbi Yossi said that it is two large eggs that are slightly larger than normal. She, she had Rebbe, she had in Berlin. And Rebbe calculated it, and those, it ends up being a little bit more than two eggs. The comma, the ode, a chad, my scream of base. And how much is that little extra amount? So Rebbe Huda said that is 120th. So again, these are different measures of how much a chetzi pras is, and it's subject to machloka, which is why it wasn't included in the, um, in, in the list. So the ilu gabe chumat ochlin tanya. On the other hand, we are talking about in, in, for for the purity of foods. Um, we have Rabbi Nathan, Rabbi Dosa, Amru, Kabeza, Shamru, Kamov, Zubata, Chama Amrim, Kamov, Belong Zubata. So again, we're comparing the eggs. So again, it's not a straight exact half from we mentioned before. Rather, how much is this chumat ochlin? It's a Kabeza. One opinion has including the shell, and one has without the shell. So again, so it's not so it's not precisely half of the measurement we had above. And that's why it wasn't listed together. Amara from Bar Papa, Amara Khesta, Zudive Rabbi Yehuda for Rabbi Yossi. So Rav from Bar Papa said in Rukhesta, this is Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Yossi being mentioned before that it wouldn't be exactly half. Abacham Omrim Kabeza Omesa Shafakov. Oman Hachamim Riyalkana Membroka. So again, we mentioned it's all now Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, but some of them a different opinion. They say that uh, the amount for Chetzi uh, Pras is one and a half. And who is this Chachamim? This is the opinion of Rabbi Yochanan and Bracha. So, so Pshita, well, obvious, because Rabbi Yochanan and Bracha is who said that a half a loaf is, it, that, that a Pras is, is three baits him. So, so no, rather teaching us that you can measure just like you could measure three eggs, you can also measure three two large eggs are equivalent in volume. Kiata Rabdimi Amar Shiger Monios Rabimodia de de Kondos Din Usa Vishir Rimatan Shra Asrin Meid. So Rabdimi, one time when he came back from Rex Israel. Um, and, and, and Bevel said that somebody named Bonyan has sent Rabbi Nasi a measure of a sa'at, which is called an usa. And Rabbi Huda measured it and found that 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 that, that a that, that sa'at measured 217 eggs. Ha sa'at hecha. Wait, so how is it possible that that's the volume of a sa'at? Idmid bari may have arbaim arbahavia. What are you talking about? Is it based on the measurements that are doraita? So direct us to, uh, is 144 eggs. So what's going on, right? So the Eid Yerushalmi may actually mishalosh, and if it's according to the, the style of Eid that's 173. The Eid Ziporit Matayin Sheva Sheva Havyan, and if you're talking about the the, 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 oh, the head use of Zipori, 
That is 207. So, so what is the case? I know. Olam is important. Rather, this is this Nusa is this Nusa measurement for Sa is a variation of the the Zippori one. Aitichalta Shadilayu. And then they simply add, and it's simply the amount that you would give a Zippori plus the amount you have to separate in order to give to a Kohen for Chala. Chalta Kamiyavin. So then how much is Chala? So Tamne Akati Matalai. So if you say that you're giving, you'd be giving. Another eight bates in for Kala, that's a problem because that's 215. That's not 217. Ella Aitiv Odot, the Rebbe Shadilayu. Rather, you must bring the excess amount that Behuda Nasi has stated before about the fact that um, the, the differences in terms of the size of the egg bolts. So, again, if you're having each egg is really 200 and 120th, then the total amount will end up roughly being 200 and uh, 17 um, eggs because again, you think 120th, so again, 120th and 200 would give you that extra 10. Uh, but again, this is approximate, that would not precisely work out. Wait, that's a problem because then it's a little more than 217 because 120th of 207 isn't 10, it's uh, it's 10.35. So, what's up? So keep on the low of it can be so low cost you later than three is that once it's less than since it's not a whole egg, it's that's not going to be important enough, that's why it's left off. Okay. Now once we're talking about measurements, so tenor banan, saash, yushami, yitera, midbarich to. So now we're comparing, we see that the difference between the yusha the 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 sa'ad yushlaim versus the one they use the when they were the Jews with the midbar is a sixth. And similarly, the one in Sipori is one sixth greater than that of the other in your shrine. And then for the end, it turns out that the amount of Sipori is one third greater than that of the used in the midbar. So, Shlish Deman, who's third? Third relative to what? Elema Shlish Midbar, it's one sixth of third of the amount that they use in the midbar. So, if you want to say it's based on a third of the, the one in the midbar, the problem is, is that the difference that we're off by 63. So that is what we're working out. So that's, so like, yeah, that'd have been 48, we have 63, that doesn't work. That, and that third difference is referring to the that of the, so I saw in your shell um in the in your slime. If Slishi Dakam Havia Hamshi no Tamia Nahit Vata Vilutva Shutuna Plot. And but then again a third of that gets you to 53, and that still leaves you with an excess of several still. So what are you talking about? So Vella de Sipori, rather saying a third of that on that of the two of the measurement of so the Hansipori, Slish D day, Kamahave. Shiva nechichada ve'ilu udva shish sheshim v'shalosh. So rather, so again, that's that's based on the one third of the tzipori sa'ah and one third of it. How much is it? And the and one third of that is tzipori. How much? Well, the tzipori shlish tida kam havia shivim nechichada ve'ilu udva shim v'shalosh. If you want to say it's based on the tzipori measurement, again, one third of two hundred seven is a little bit less than um is, is seventy minus one third. So again, that still doesn't account for the 63. This is what it meant to say. No, they're saying at the end of the day, the measurement of Tibori ends up being close to being one third more than, than that of the uh, the amount of Tibori based on the measurement of the of the Tibori. Which and a Third of the of the measurement of the tiporinza is one half of that of the amount the 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 saw that was measured in the in the, when they were in the base or in the midbar. So Matkifla Ravina. So Ravina says I don't like this. It doesn't like Ravir my solution. Midi Karov Karov County. You say it's a bit close to you, but it doesn't say Karov there, so that can't be right. Ella Amar Ravina Hazika Amar. No, so it can't be if it meant approximate, it would have said the word approximate somewhere there. It didn't. So Nimsate Shlish of Tipori Biv 
Udayod, Shal Rabbi Yitzhak Al Mechsa, Shal Bibar Shlish Beitza. Rather, Sirvina said, this is what he means to say that one third of the Porisa, together with the extant amount of one twentieth of Rabbi Yudah Nasi, is greater than half of the Sa'ah of 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 the lab of midbar by two thirds of an egg. So in order, order so in other words, the, the, the sipori, the the sa'ah of sipori combined with the extra ten, then that's how you end up getting to the final amount. Again, a lot of math there. So um, again, if you want to do more of the, of the but again, a lot of it's based on process. Doesn't quite work out, but again, close enough, um, and that's what they meant to say. So tanur banan. Now that we now that we've mentioned this, now we're going to go back to um, talk about chal. So reshi reset teshem, right? So you set up a, set up a part of the of of the of, of your of your dough as as a yitzchak chala. So today reset teshem, the chal reset teshem, right? So the question is, so how much is do you need for chal? So again, now we're we're on we're on pegi mo that now. So today yisad hamidbar. So how much is the amount of dough you need? That's the amount of an isa that they had in the midbar. The kami sa midbar. Then how much is this this, this measurement? So let's do the calculation. So to see, for omer asri tayfahi. We know that the omer, the amount that you see that you would have of, of that you take of the man was a was one tenth of an eifa. Ikan amru shiva urvaim kema vaod chayva v'chala hein shisha al yishami shein chamisha shel sipori. So from here, based on this, Chazal has the different have the head as follows: that the amount is seven quarters of a cup of flour, and upwards is obligated in challah midaraita, and this is equivalent of six quarters of a cup of using your your shine measurement, which is five quarters of a cup of the sipori measurement. So mikan amru ha'ochal kumidazu harezu zebarim varach. And also, they said whoever eats the amount of the um, of, of the omer is considered to be a healthy and blessed. That's the amount of being a health, um, uh, proper amount to eat. Get your alkane rabatan. You more than that, and your gluttonous possibly become a hukubameyah. If you eat less than this, then you'll damage your bowels. Um, as far as whether or not you should follow this health plan, please consult your please consult your local your local nutrition to dietitian. Um, again, what, again, with a lot of medical advice we find in the in the Gemara, um, you should again take caution when using it. Please consult a doctor first. Okay, so now we're in the Mishnah on Peggy Moabet. On Shechatzer, on Shemir Pesach, Shem Shachafu, Velo Yerbu, Kol Shegavoa, Asara Tlachim, Shemir Pesach, Machot Mikan, Lachatzer. So the people in it. Okay, so let me. Uh, Moment while I pull up the um, while I find the uh, while, while, I, while I find the diagram, please. Sorry, one moment. Okay, sorry, bear with me, please. Okay, here we are. Sorry about that. Okay, so everybody can see this, I hope. Okay, so again. So if you people living in a courtyard, people living um, on the second story, 
and they and they forgot to make an error between the two of them. So anything that is above ten tefachim is considered to be belong to the repeset. People living on the, on the above the level, less than that belongs to people on the ground on the ground floor. Um, people who have access to the court to the courtyard. Okay, kolyat habor vasela similarly and embankment surrounding a cistern. Similarly, by the edges of a cistern, if this edge of the cistern are ten fachim, then it is shayach to the merpeset. If it's less than that, it would apply to lechatzer. Okay. The med dvor memorim bismucha. So when is this the case? This is when the where the where the embankment or the things that are that are tall are near the mirpesa, near the balcony of, of its upper floor. But if it's far away, then it doesn't matter that it's that it's tall, it's not considered to be relevant to the upper to the upper story. How much is considered to be close? What's considered to be adjacent if it's within four tefachim? Okay, so now the Gemara continues, um, trying to figure out how this how this 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 this, this case works out. Shita lezepata lezepata. So obviously they're they're going to um, create a a problem because they each have access to the area, so therefore it's a, it's, it's, it's a problem. Similarly, if there's a window between two courtyards, that can, ge and can generate an issue, right? Cumulative of access in the same courtyard. That means that they can oscar on each other. So rather, so what are, what are we talking about? So what's that to be in the end? What's the world that we have to use for this common area? This one can throw out this one. And therefore, each of them can, can, can throw there if they can't properly carry. Therefore, it's equivalent to the case of two court of the wall that's between two courtyards. If one can only access it by lowering, another one can also only do it by lowering. Then if that's the case where it's at the each of them have to access it by lowering it, then that's considered to be the case of um. Uh, again, we had a ditch. Okay, so again, so the case we had here, this is where each of them have an entryway between one and the other one. That's why that creates a problem. And similarly here, each of them can use the top of the uh, of the wall, but they have to throw it, but they can't actually carry it. They, only, they, can, they can only can throw it on top. They can't actually uh, properly carry to and from it. If one of them can access it through proper entrance, the other one can only get to, can, can access it by, by throwing onto it. That's the case of, of Ravuna and Rav Nachman. We say it goes by the person who has the, the people, it, goes, it's, it belongs to people with proper access, not to those who have to access it via throwing. One of them can get through by, by normal entryway, the other one can get access it only by lowering. Then we follow up the opinion of uh, Rav Shizri that in Rav Nachman, the, the place may be used only by people who can be in access to it, and not meaning only to the people who can with the proper entrance, not by those who can lower it. So now the question is, what if it's somewhere in between? But what if we have the case where one of them can lower it, which one of them can get and access it by throwing on top of it? Which one of those is considered to be more convenient access and usage? So, and so can they can they uh, use this area then, or can I use the area if this is if this is the little access to this location? So Amarav and Rav says, and Rav says, nope, both of them are forbidden. So Rav says they both have equal or equal claims, and therefore it's forbidden for everybody. But Shmuel says no, you, it goes to the person who can access it via, via lowering, because that's to be more convenient than throwing. Because Shmuel explains this one can use it easily, and this one has the both of using it. We have a general rule that whenever we have a choice to have access, one has the easy way, one has a difficult way, we say it belongs to the person who has an easier time using it.